Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. Today the church does celebrate the sixth Sunday after Trinity, and my sermon is actually based on the epistle pointed for today, coming to us from the sixth chapter of St. Paul's epistle written to the Romans. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, my dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ. As I made reference to in this epistle written to the Romans that is cited for today's Sunday, St. Paul is having a debate of sorts, if you will, trying to point out that we should, as Christians, as human beings, we should die to ourselves, in other words, so that we should die to our sinfulness, we should die to the world so in order that we can live with Christ. St. Paul is making the point, and again, we have to go to the previous chapter, but and let's do that right now. If we flip back, if you will, a chapter earlier and look at Romans chapter 5, verse 8, we hear, But God commendeth his love for us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Again, St. Paul is making the point that God loves us so much that he sent his only son into the world to die on the cross for us in order to save us from our sins. And in the verse that I just read to you, coming from this fifth chapter of the epistle written to the Romans, St. Paul is making the point, is emphasizing, if you will, that even though we were sinners... God still did what he did for us. In other words, he sent his son into the world to, again, to save us from our sins. And so St. Paul is making the argument here in both the fifth chapter and the sixth chapter that we as grievous sinners, we as people who commit sins on a daily basis, Basically, the point being is that God, yes, does forgive sins. And so the question arose in some circles, well, if that's the case, what's the point of even, why should we even worry about not sinning? Because God's going to forgive anyways. Will God forgive? Well, most certainly he will forgive. Will he forgive the sin that I committed? Yes, he'll, he'll forgive the sin that I committed. But why not go ahead and just keep committing the same sins all over again? Worse and worse and worse even because God's going to forgive him anyways. And again, here in the fifth and sixth chapter of the epistle written to the Romans, St. Paul makes that very argument. He says, should we go ahead and sin against God in order for him to forgive those sins? God forbid that I would keep committing the same sins over and over and over again. You see, the point that St. Paul was making and the point that I'm trying to make, dear friends, is that when we sin, we separate ourselves from God. When we sin, we go against the goodness of God. When we sin, we separate ourselves from the goodness of God. And so the point being is that we should try our very best, and again, we're human beings, so it's not very likely that we're going to be perfect, obviously, but that being said, we should still try our best as human beings, as good and faithful and devout Christians, not to commit sins so that we will not offend God. We should try not to to commit sins so that we do not separate ourselves from God. St. Paul is also making the point, if you will, he's trying to connect the two, if you will, that he's trying to show that Christ died on the cross, but in other words, he had to die in regard in order to be raised up on the third day. St. Paul is making the connection that 
our blessed Savior would not have been able to experience Easter unless he experienced Good Friday. In other words, he had to carry the cross and die first in order to be laid in the tomb and then risen from the dead. Same point that St. Paul is making for us. We ourselves have to die to ourselves. We ourselves have to die to the world. We ourselves have to die to what we want in our life in order to bring God to, to greater, if you will, significance in our lives. As human beings, we, we always want things our way, don't we? We want what we want, when we want it, how we want it. We're always focused on the me. But God is not that way. And again, as faithful, devout Christians, we need to be more focused on what God wills and not what I will. If we look elsewhere in the New Testament, this time in the epistle written to the Colossians, in the second chapter, in the twelfth verse, St. Paul writes, We are buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. St. Paul is pointing out again the waters of baptism. In baptism, when we are, if you're either submerged or dunked or the water is sprinkled on you as a baby, bear in mind, the point is still the same. The waters of baptism, if you will, represent both death and life. If you think about water in that terminology, so to speak, water can represent both death and life, can't it? Again, if, we, if we're stuck in the desert somewhere and we have no water, we, we don't have any water with us and we can't find any water, eventually, if we do without long enough, we will die of thirst because we don't have any water. On the other hand, if you've seen, if you're like me and you've seen on the news lately the, the ravages of too much water, if you will, meaning floods and so forth, Again, it can mean that your house is swept away or you're swept away yourself and you're drowned. So again, water can identify, if you will, both life and death. So it is with the waters of baptism, quite frankly, and this is what St. Paul is referring to and the point that he's making is that in the waters of baptism, we die to the world, we die to ourselves. And so that we can have new life in our blessed Savior. At baptism, again, and the point is still the same, whether you're baptized as an infant or you're baptized as an adult, the point is the same. All your sins are wiped away. You're like the, uh, like the slate or the chalkboard that's, that's wiped clean. All your sins have been wiped away, and you are a new creation. And why is that? Because, again, it is through the power and the mercy and the grace of our Heavenly Father who has forgiven us our sins. Again, if we turn this time to the epistle written to the Hebrews in the ninth chapter and the 28th verse, we hear the following. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Again, our blessed Savior did indeed bear our sins when he was on that cross at the hill at Calvary. And again, as St. Paul writes here, we will see him again in his glory. But yet, St. Paul makes the point that we have to look for him. If we're so caught up in the world, here in this world, if we're so caught up looking for everything but God, we're going to find everything but God. It's that simple. Again, 
if our mind is fixated on how we're going to pleasure ourselves via drink, via drugs, if we're caught up in how we're going to enrich our lives via money and wealth, how we're going to make ourselves look important via title or via position that we have at our jobs, if we fixate on those things, if we focus on those things solely, we don't have time to look for God, do we? As people of faith, we need to stop looking for things here in the world. Quit focusing on worldly things so that we can focus on things up above, to focus on things of God. Our blessed Lord even says here in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 38, he says, For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living. For all live unto him. Our blessed Savior is making the point that our Heavenly Father is not the God of the dead. He's the, dead of, he's the God of the living. Excuse me. Again, we live for God. We should not live for drink or live for drugs or live for wealth or live for possessions. We should do our best to live our lives for God so that we separate ourselves more and more and more from the ways of the world, so that we can separate ourselves from the wants and the desires of the world, so that we can be more in tune with what God wants for our life, not for solely for what we want. As I've made the point before, dear friends, and I'll certainly make it a, a, after this as well, but the point is still the same. There's nothing wrong with the blessings that we have. They're just that. They're blessings. God has blessed us with health. God has blessed us with our homes. God has blessed us with our possessions. God has blessed us with what we have. As such, we, we should consider them for what they are. Blessings that the Lord has provided and that we have worked for with his help. But that being said... When they become the end all and the be all of everything that we think about, everything that we desire, everything that we want, that's where the problem comes in. Then they start being our gods, so to speak. We start worshiping at the altar of riches, or we start worshiping at the altar of possessions, or we start worshiping at the altar of, of drugs or booze, or the list goes on and on. We need to always put things in perspective as faithful, devout Christians to remember who we are and, more importantly, who we belong to. As sons and daughters of God, we belong to God as our Heavenly Father. As sons and daughters, brothers and sisters to Christ, we always have to acknowledge the fact that it is Christ himself who has forgiven us, who has borne the cross on our behalf, and who has called us to continue the works of the church here on earth. He said that he's going to prepare a place for us. He's going to prepare a mansion for us. And so as a result, we are always called to remember this fact and acknowledge the fact that God, who has done so much for us, he has created us, he has nourished us, he has given us life, he has blessed us with everything that we have. He even took it a step further and sent his son into the world to carry the cross, to save us from our sins. So dear friends, today as all days, let us take time out of our busy schedules to acknowledge the goodness of God, to thank him for the many blessings he's bestowed, and then, little by little, disengage from all the things of the world so that we can grow closer to God, to make him number one in our life, not possessions, not worldly goods. God bless each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen.